Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. This is take two, because take one, it looks slightly out of sync. I don't know why. I have the big light. I have the lamp next to the camera. I, I, I don't know what the problem was, but yeah. So anyway, coming back at you today with a collection update. A um, little bit of a bigger one here. I did go out and uh, mostly vinyl records. I have not really purchased much vinyl more recently. Um, so I went out and kind of splurged a little bit. I did pick up some record store day stuff. So we'll we'll show that off as well. Um, but did get some other stuff in the meantime. So actually, let's start with the music first. Let's do that and get that out of the way. And then we'll do the other stuff. So in addition to... Uh, I did get a couple CDs here. This is actually a freebie. This was cool. Um, this is a CD that was actually done by a guy that I went to high school with. Um, the one local record store that I go to uh, most often, the owner uh, knows this guy, and I guess he took in some of his CDs uh, to give out to customers and stuff, but he gave this to me. So I was like, cool. Um, yeah, this is a dude I went to high school with, and um, actually, I, he always played music. Like, I remember in school, he played music. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, interested, interested to uh, to hear this. So that should be pretty cool. And then I bought, yes, I actually bought a CD. Um, we have uh, Cheap Trick with Dream Police. Now, this is the uh, 2006 reissue. This has a bunch of bonus tracks on here, which is not available on vinyl. Um, that's mainly what I pick up studio albums for. If they're deluxe editions or they're reissues with bonus tracks that you can't get anywhere else, that's why I pick it up. But this is a classic album, you know, classic cover as well. You know, Cheap Trick, Can't Go Wrong. Um, mostly live stuff um, on here. There is a different version of the title track, but the other stuff is live and most of it i think one of one of the live songs has been released before but the rest of it is exclusive to this release so figured why not um cheap trick put out i think the first three or four maybe five six they put out the first bunch of their albums reissued with bonus tracks and stuff i have most of them there's like one i think um what is the next one that came out after this? Um, I think All For One. Is it All For One or One On One? I think it's One On One. I can't remember. But I think that's the only one I don't have that has the reissue stuff on there. So just one more to grab and we'll be good to go. And then, like I said, did get a bunch of vinyl here. I will start with the Record Store Day stuff now. This was the last one from Black Friday of last year that I did not grab. Um, I held off on this one. Um, of course, you know, I was out of work for a while and stuff like that. So I didn't really need this one. But, you know, since I kind of back where I want to be financially, um, I was able to finally not only pick all this stuff up, but snag a copy of this one. So we have uh, Fountains of Wayne with Welcome interstate managers which of course has none other than their big hit stacy's mom um i believe this is the first uh issue of this on vinyl they did i think earlier this year they did another pressing i think it's red um i wouldn't mind picking that one up but this one is actually a uh, clear vinyl with uh black swirls in it which should be pretty cool uh, because all vinyl is actually clear when you make it, and then you add the colors later. Um, but good stuff on here. Again, Stacy's Mom is a great song. Some of the other tunes on here are pretty good. And there is a bonus track, which I believe is exclusive to the vinyl release. Unfortunately, um, Adam Schlesinger, the, the singer of Fountains of Wayne, unfortunately he passed away uh, last year due to COVID. Um, but you know, the music will obviously live on, but Stacy's mom is a great song. Um, one from my, cause this album came out in 2003. So one from my preteen years that I always enjoy still, you know, again, still a great tune 
And i um, looking forward to cranking this up on vinyl. Should be a good list. And I gotta start making room for all this stuff. <laughs> and then the uh, rest of the record store day pickups are from uh, this past weekend, which was the first record store day drop. Next month, there will be the second one. And then, of course, in November for Black Friday will be the third one. So there you go. But uh, did not get that lucky this time around. Um, actually going to record stores. Um, I've just been so busy with work and other stuff, uh, martial arts and stuff like that. I did not get to go out on record store day this year. Um, again, I had a seminar to go to. I had work. That kind of is more important in my opinion. Um, but I did the past couple days go to some of the local record stores and managed to pick up a, a couple of the releases. Uh, there's still quite a few that I would like to pick up, but if I find them out in the wild, you know, leftovers, that's fine. But most of them, I'm probably going to go online and grab them. And that's just how it goes with Record Store Day. But first up, one of the ones that I was really looking forward to, we have UFO. Nice 10-inch single here. This has um, Mother Mary and This Kids, which are the original studio versions from... Uh, what is it? Strangers in the Night? Yeah, this is the uh, the studio tracks that were on there. And this is on uh, clear vinyl, which should be pretty cool. UFO typically will do a record store day release, so I always try to pick them up when I can. Been getting into these guys more recently. Great, you know, 70s British rock, a little prog in there sometimes, especially the 80s stuff. But good stuff nonetheless. Very happy to get this one. And then we have the Doors release for this time. Again, the Doors typically will put out a record store day release. This is the Morrison Hotel Sessions. Again, very good stuff. And this is just all outtakes and um, different, you know, some different versions. Um, actually, it's just all outtakes on here. Just multiple takes of the songs that would end up on that album. And I believe this is just on straight up black vinyl. Um, this is number uh, 2951. I don't know how many they, uh, 16,000. So 16,000 is a lot, especially for this. But, um, you know, still very cool. But again, you have uh, side one and most of side two is just different takes of Queen of the Highway. And then the last song on side two is Roadhouse Blues. You have a couple more versions of that. You have them doing Rock Me Baby and Money, That's What I Want. I guess they were just jamming. Um, and then you have Peace For All, two versions of Peace For All going here, which is actually my favorite door song. So very cool. Um, on take 14 of Queen of the Highway, uh, Robbie Krieger actually overdubbed some guitar stuff on there. So that should be cool. But again, a uh, huge fan of the doors, like I said. Typically for record store day, they will put out a release. I always like to grab it. And next up, this was supposed to come out last year for record store day. And, and, you know, COVID happened. So COVID screwed a lot of things up. So this one actually got pushed to this year. But it actually, um, yeah, because it has the uh, 2020 uh, copyright on here. So I was going to say this actually worked out for the 25th anniversary of this movie, but it came out in 95, not 96, but that's okay. And we have uh, John Carpenter's Village of the Damned soundtrack that he also did with Dave Davies from The Kinks. Very cool stuff. This one is on uh, marbled orange vinyl. Um, I enjoy Village of the Damned. Um, the last movie that Christopher Reeves did before he got into his unfortunate accident. But a good remake, in my opinion. I know in more recent years, this movie has gotten a lot more respect, which is good. But of course, uh, nothing beats John Carpenter doing soundtracks for his own movies. I believe the only director that has ever done that. But good stuff on here. Uh, there is some alternate versions of some of the music, which is very cool. Uh, so looking forward to, again, uh, spinning this one and adding it to the John Carpenter collection in terms of the soundtracks. And the last uh, Record Store Day release that I got for now, this again is one that I really wanted to get my hands on. 
Uh, very happy that one of the local record stores still had one copy left. And it is the 40th anniversary box set of Triumph's Allied Forces. Uh, Triumph is the other great Canadian power trio next to Rush. I have uh, more recently gotten into their music, and this is a phenomenal box set. This is amazing stuff on here. Um, definitely worth the money. If you can track one of these down, I highly recommend it. So on here, you have the original album on picture disc and it's completely remastered you have a double live album live in cleveland you have a seven inch single which includes a live version of magic power which is from this album and a new version of the title track allied forces which is a fantastic song um, it has a 24 page booklet which is just a retrospect of the album with photos and essays and all the good stuff uh, limited edition vintage tour program, limited edition 24 by 36 tour poster, limited edition all access tour pass, uh, three reproductions of Rick Emmett, the guitar player, uh, some comic book art that he did, and three limited edition uh, reproductions of the lyric sheets. So again, this is a great box set. Again, I'm very, very happy that I was able to track this down because this is definitely worth the money. Again, great band, great album. You know, again, if you're a fan of this group like I am, you need to get this box set before they get super expensive online. So there you go. Um, again, that is all the record store day stuff for round one that I was able to pick up at actual record stores. Um, some of the other ones I was looking at online, some are decently priced. Some are already in the one $200 range. It's just stupid how that goes. Um, but I will eventually track down all the ones that I want. It's just a matter of time. But yeah. So the rest of the stuff is stuff I grabbed uh, locally at some of the record stores, you know, along with this stuff. And actually one from Walmart and I think one I got online. So actually, no, the one I got online was the Fountains of Wayne one. But first up, got some singles here. Uh, we got uh, none other than Diamond David Lee Roth himself with Going Crazy. This is the 12-inch promo that was sent out again to the radio stations back in the day. Love this song. One of my favorite David Lee Roth solo songs. Don't mind having the single of it. And then we have uh, The World Waits for You by Fast Way. Fast Way was an offshoot of UFO and um because pete way was in it and motorhead fast eddie clark this was one of the bands he was in and i forget who the um uh the guy from jerry shirley from humble pie was the drummer in this band um again i don't really know that much about them this was like five bucks so i figured hey why not grab it i did also get their uh debut album which you'll see in a little bit here and this is again the 12-inch uh, promo that was sent out to the radio stations also has the gold stamp on there. And another 12-inch, actually these are all 12-inch singles, but I do have uh, Talk Dirty to Me by Poison. Great song. Again, one of my favorite Poison songs. Love the artwork on here. And the really cool thing about this is it also has Want Some, Need Some on side A, and side B is a 10-minute interview with the band. Uh, this is also the UK 12-inch uh, single, so a little bit of a extra bonus stuff on there. You know, very happy to pick this one up. And again, it was only 12 bucks. You know, can't go wrong. And the last single that I got, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this one, but I don't care. It was $5. La Vida Loca by Ricky Martin, a great song. You cannot deny this is a great song, okay? Um, again, this is the uh, very typical of pop and rap and hip-hop. Most of the 12-inch singles that would come out back in the day would always feature remix versions, and that's exactly what this is. Um, this has the uh, English club mix, the English dub capella, and then the B-side is the Spanglish club mix and the push and pull English house mix. So again, um, a bunch of different remixes on here, but these are always fun to pick up, so not bad at all. And then the rest are all regular full-length albums. Um, first up, this is actually really cool. I didn't know this. This is a uh, Netherlands exclusive. 
uh, Rolling Stones compilation. This is called Stones Story, and they actually did two more of these. They did three volumes total. I um, want to grab the other two at some point here. This was, again, yeah, this was like seven bucks, you know, not bad at all. I have, you know, most of this stuff elsewhere, but I figured for a couple dollars, you know, another Rolling Stones album, really cool artwork on here, might as well. Um, but on here, you have their version of Wanna Be Your Man, which is a Beatles song. Um, not Fade Away, Carol, Little Red Rooster, Time Is On My Side, Satisfaction, Get Off My Cloud, 19th Nervous Breakdown, Under My Thumb, which is one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs, uh, Painted Black, Let's Spend the Night Together, Ruby Tuesday, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Honky Tonk Women, Sympathy for the Devil, Street Fighting Man, Midnight Rambler, and Gimme Shelter. So again, a lot of great Rolling Stones songs on here. Interesting, you know, Netherlands exclusive pressing. Very cool artwork. Can't go wrong. Again, it's the Rolling Stones. And another, actually, this one I got online. Um, this is a very interesting release. This is a Japanese exclusive Van Halen promo that was sent out to commemorate their tour for the 1984 album. And it does kind of have, it kind of have a, a horrible name. Um, it's called Van Halen Rapes Japan. Um, I don't really agree with the name. I don't know why they called it that. A little negative, in my opinion, a little bit of a bad taste. But again, uh, this is a Japanese exclusive pressing. This is pretty hard to come by. I did get this for a decent price. Um, it does kind of rack up a little bit online. But I got it for about as much as I wanted to pay. And the record is flawless. There's no scratches or, or chops or anything on it. Um, and the sleeve is in pretty good condition as well. Um, what's really cool is it has the tour dates for the 1984 tour. The strip here shows the other Van Halen albums. There's pictures of the band members and the track listing. Now, it does open up with an intro from David Lee Roth, so that is unique to this release. And the songs on here are Panama, Pretty Woman, Unchained, Dance the Night Away, Ain't Talking About Love, that's side one. Side two is Jump, I'll Wait, which is my favorite David Lee Roth Van Halen song. Dancing in the Street and The Cradle Will Rock and You Really Got Me. Um, and they call it the, the A side one or the A side is bad. Side B or side two is bad, bad side. So that's pretty cool. But again, um, you know, very cool to get this. Again, I do not agree with the name. I wish they would have picked a better name to call it, but... Again, a Japanese exclusive Van Halen release. Of course, I'm going to pick it up. I'm a sucker for Van Halen, you guys know. Clearly, because I'm wearing a Van Halen t-shirt. But, um, yeah. And there was another, a couple years after that one came out, there was another Japanese exclusive Van Halen compilation. It was called uh, David Lee Roth versus Sammy Hagar, an anthology. Um, I would like to get that at some point again. Since it was a Japanese exclusive, that one does run a little bit more expensive online. But that's okay. You know, I'll track it down one of these days. But that was cool to get, finally. Um, next up, great album here. We got Leon Russell and the Shelter People, which has one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, Stranger in a Strange Land, which kicks off the album. Great stuff. And we've got... Amigos by Santana, another Santana album. This one uh, has Dance Sister Dance, which is a great Santana song. And the artwork is really, really cool on here. Really like that artwork. But, of course, it's 70s Santana. Can't go wrong. Um, next up, got a official bootleg. Of course, this is one of those deals. Uh, this is a European release where it's easier to obtain the rights to these uh most of these are like radio broadcasts. So it's a two-volume set. We've got ACDC, Shot Down, in the Big Easy. I did get both. Uh, there is another pressing, which is on clear vinyl. These are on regular black vinyl. Um, so we've got volume one. And the artwork is the same. The only thing that's different is the color scheme. And then we've got volume two. And these were recorded in New Orleans in 1996. Again, it's a radio broadcast. Uh, like I said, a lot of these official bootlegs come out over in Europe because it's easier to obtain the rights over there. Here, there's a lot of red tape and stuff. But overseas, again, 
I have the tape. Here's the tape. Put it on Rhino or, you know, or CD or whatever. So it's a little bit easier over there, which is where most of the, the uh, Europe and Japan is where most of these come from. But I still like to have them. They're always nice to have in the collection. And then next up, got a couple uh, Michael Schenker groups here when he went off on his own. First up, we have the uh, first album, which is just self-titled. Good stuff on here. Armed and Ready is on here. Uh, Cry for the Nations is on here. There's some, some good stuff. And then we have uh, MSG. I already have this. I forgot that I already have this album, but it was only like seven bucks. Eight bucks, so I figured, eh, why not just have an extra one lying around just in case. But good stuff on here. And then speaking of Fast Way, here is their self-titled debut. Awesome cover on there. And this does have the uh, bonus 7-inch uh, that came with it. Yeah, um, not Pete Way. Uh, yeah, no, Pete Way. Yeah, Pete Way's on here. Pete Way played bass, but... Yeah, Jerry Shirley, the drummer from uh, Humble Pie, and then David King was the singer. Pete Way played bass. I don't know why he's not on the back here, unless it's a, a gatefold. But here is the uh, bonus 7-inch, which has uh, Far Away From Home. It's just an age side on there i'll put that where it needs to be all right maybe okay pete way pete way joined i guess later but or no i think pete way was in the band and then he left but they still called it fast way i don't remember the story exactly but it was something like that i think he was in the band and then he left the band and they still called it you know fast way even though he wasn't there because yeah it was fast was for fast eddie clark from motorhead and way was for pete way but again i think that was the deal is he was in the band and then he left the band and you know how that goes but now that's where i need it that's where i prefer it. and then we've got uh dio on stage or dio good god yeah dio is right there the rainbow on stage which was the uh, first live album put out by Rainbow. Yeah, Fob Dio is in the band. It's just he was in Rainbow at the time, not his own band. Um, but good stuff on here. A lot of great songs. Cannot go wrong with Old School Rainbow. And then speaking of Dio, <laughs> um, got a couple Dio releases here. First up, this is the uh, Rocktober release of Lock Up the Wolves. Um, I previously had this one on CD, upgraded to vinyl. There is an original pressing of this when it came out, but it's really expensive. But I found this one, and this is actually on gray vinyl, which should be pretty cool. Um, yeah, good stuff on here. One of the more underrated Dio albums, but great artwork as usual. And then I got another uh, official bootleg here. This is Ronnie's birthday show, Milwaukee Broadcast 1994. Very good stuff. Again, always want to track down as much Dio as I can. Uh, it does say on the sticker or the sticker here, uh, colored vinyl. It's actually clear vinyl. Um, there is no color pressing as of now. I don't know why they put it on there, but it is clear vinyl, which again is okay with me. Uh, but great stuff. Again, love Dio. We I think we all miss him a lot. Next up, this one just came out. This is a, a repress of the original Montrose album. This one is on yellow vinyl. Again, I believe like this literally just came out like a month or two ago. Uh, but great stuff on here. Of course, Rock Candy, um, Bad Motor Scooter, Rock the Nation, Space, Space Station number five. A lot of great stuff on here. I do have the original pressing. But hey, you know, classic album. That band that Sammy Hagar was in before Van Halen. So there you have it. Um, got some Motley Crue next. First, uh, we have, I was surprised he had this so cheap, but we have Saints of Los Angeles. This is the original pressing. He only wanted $23. I was very surprised about that, but this is the latest uh, release from Motley Crue. Um, there, I haven't heard this whole album, but um, 
the title track is really good. I do really like that song, and Motherfucker of the Year is a good song as well. Um, but I'll have to uh, again give this one another or listen here to hear the uh, to hear hear here to check out the rest of the songs. And then um, I've been on the hunt for some of the latest Walmart exclusive pressings that have been coming out. Um, unfortunately, I was only able to find one, but it's a good one. It is Motley Crue's Greatest Hits. This is on Crimson Red Vinyl, Red Smoke Vinyl. So there's a little bit of black in there, as you can see. Uh, this is the 2009 release of the Greatest Hits album. The original 1998 release had a vinyl release as well. That one's a really hard to come by, but until then, very cool. And I like how they made it red to fit with the motif here. But a lot of you know, a lot of uh, classic Motley Crue songs are on here. Um, you know, all the big ones is on here, so good stuff nonetheless. Um, I did have another pressing of that, but I, I traded that one in. I actually prefer this one. And then um, you'll notice a trend with the colored vinyl. I was able to find a lot of these anniversary and these represses that are colored vinyl, which I'm okay with. I love different colored vinyl. But we have Slaughter uh, with their uh, Stick It To You, their debut album. Great stuff. This is on Translucent Gold. Uh, this is the 30th anniversary release. But great stuff on here. Again, um, Up All Night is a great song. My favorite is Fly To The Angels. But a lot of fantastic music. Slaughter is definitely one of the more underrated hair metal bands that are actually really good musicians. And it's a shame that, I mean, they did, you know, have Fly to the Angels was a big hit. Up All Night was a big hit. But they should have been bigger, in my opinion. Again, they are one of the better hair metal bands. Um, same with White Lion. And, you know, they, and I think they kind of came, came in the game a little too late. Um, cause that came out in 1990 and that was kind of when hair metal was done. Um, all those guys, except the guitar player were in Vinnie Vincent invasion. And then when that went belly up, they became slaughter. So there you go. Um, we've got another classic debut here of the hair metal genre with Skid Row's, uh, debut. Again, I have the original pressing of this. This is the, uh, limited or the anniversary. I don't know why it's an anniversary edition. It's not, but um, this is on uh, purple vinyl, which is very cool. There's another pressing which came out the same time. That's on red vinyl. For some reason, that's really expensive. I don't know why. There's nothing special about it. It's just on red vinyl. Um, but this one's on purple, and I got it for way cheaper, so I don't mind. If I ever track down the red one, I'll get it because I love the original Skid Row before Sebastian Bach became a complete fucking nutcase. But yeah. And then next up, one of my favorite live albums of all time, Get Your Yeah Yeahs Out by the Rolling Stones. This is a clear pressing. This is actually part of a series that the Rolling Stones did where they reissued a bunch of their albums on clear vinyl. Um, I would like to get all those. This is the first one, but it's a good one to start with. Again, this is one of my favorite live albums of all time, one of the best live albums of all time. Really good stuff on here. And next up, another one on clear vinyl. This is a Rocktober pressing of Machine Head by Deep Purple. Again, another classic uh, classic album, one of the best albums of all time. And again, on clear vinyl, cannot go wrong. I believe, because Deep Purple, like with the Rolling Stones, they did reissue a bunch of theirs on purple vinyl, obviously. I don't know if Machine Head got a, a purple vinyl release. I'm sure it did. But I'll have to track that down at some point. But until then, cannot go wrong with this. Love this album from start to finish. Only a couple more here and then we'll move on. Um, next up, we have uh, the story so far, the best of Def Leppard. Um, this is uh, Def Leppard. The CD counterpart to this was two CDs. They actually split it into two volumes on vinyl. Um, vo volume two only ever got a release in Europe. I'll have to, but it's really easy to track down. It's not that expensive. It was actually a record store day exclusive over there. Uh, but this one is cool. I had the American pressing. This is the European pressing, which has a bonus seven inch single of 
Def Leppard's version of Personal Jesus, which I love their version of that song. A very cool version. But this is some good stuff. A lot of the big hits are on here. Um, this is actually still sealed. I'm not going to crack this one open yet. Uh, but again, it does have... Uh, actually, uh, the B-side is We All Need Christmas. If I would read the sticker right there, I would find out. But yeah, that is uh, tucked away on the inside here. But a lot of the big hits, of course, Animal Photograph, Pour Some Sugar On Me, Love Bites, Let's Get Rocked, Armageddon It, Foolin', Two Steps Behind, Heaven Is, Rocket, Hysteria, Have You Ever Needed Someone So Bad, Make Love Like a Man, Action, When Love and Hate Collide, and Rock of Ages. Um, again, this is Volume 1. Volume 2 is really easy to get a hold of. I'll track that down at some point here. But um, I guess Def Leppard will get canceled because they have a song called Make Love Like a Man. So, whatever. And actually, one more <laughs> after this one. Um, I uh, This just came out last week on vinyl. So I picked up Mammoth Wolfgang Van Halen's debut. This is the independent record store exclusive, which is on Black Ice Vinyl. I also just ordered the Walmart exclusive Red Vinyl. Uh, went to multiple Walmarts to try to find it. Everywhere I went was sold out. I got a copy on eBay for about what I wanted to pay for it. But very, very, I have not listened to this yet, but I'm very, very excited, and I cannot wait to hear this complete album. I'm really looking forward to this. From what I've heard from everybody, it's great. So I'll have to check it out for myself. And now the last one. Got the uh, green translucent vinyl pressing of Ted Nugent's debut album. Uh, there is also a blue pressing that came out. I'll get that one sometime down the road. but. This is the one I wanted to get more. Unfortunately, this was open. It does not have the OBI strip, but that's okay. Just absolutely fantastic stuff on here. Uh, basically a greatest hits album for the most part. All A lot of big songs are on here. Stranglehold, Stormtrooper, Hey Baby, Just What the Doctor Ordered, Snakeskin Cowboys, Motor City Madhouse, Where Have You Been All My Life. Um, just absolute, you know, classic rock. And not classic in the term but classic is this shit never gets old but great stuff on here very happy to finally get this pressing um so yeah a lot of music a lot of great music here a lot of great repressings and stuff but now let's move on to other things so um i got a bunch more uh impact action movie magazines first up we've got the november 1992 issue with Arnold Schwarzenegger on the cover. Unfortunately, this does not have the poster. Uh, they pulled the poster out. Uh, this had a Arnold Schwarzenegger poster in it, but unfortunately, it's not in here. Then we have the January 1993 issue with Richard Norton and Cynthia Rothrock on the cover. This, I think all the rest of these have the poster. Um, this one actually has a Gary Daniels poster in it, which is very cool. Uh, this poster is in that shitty movie, Paper Dragons, but that's okay, because the magazine's cool. Then we have May 1993 with Jean-Claude Van Damme on the cover. And this one has a Van Damme collage of stuff from Hard Target and Nowhere to Run. Then we've got July 1993 with Cliffhanger on the cover. And I do have a couple of more of these coming in the mail. So again, um, whenever I find these on eBay, if it's ones that I don't have, I always like to grab them, particularly the ones from the 90s. And this one does have a Cliffhanger poster. Then we've got August 1993 with my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie on the cover, Last Action Hero. And of course, it has a Last Action Hero poster. And then we've got October 1993, which is Dragon the Bruce Lee story. Now, this one and the next one, the seller took out the poster and was selling it separately, so I was able to get both, I don't know why they couldn't just leave them in, whatever, but I do have the poster that goes with it. Since it's already pulled out, I'll just hang it. 
And then the other issue I bought was the July 1994 issue, which has the crow on the cover, and it does have a crow poster that goes with it. And then we have the December 2000 issue with Charlie's Angels on the cover. And the last one, this actually showed up in the mail earlier today. Um, I'm recording this a few days before it's uploaded because I have to work crazy hours now. But uh, at least it's done and I can just upload it when I have time. Uh, but this is the September 2007 issue, which has none other than Rush Hour 3 on the cover. Again, I have a couple, few more of these coming in the mail. Whenever I can find these, I like to grab them because great stuff. Love reading the old magazines. Um, and I actually went out and, in addition to getting a bunch of records, I actually went out and bought some video games for a change. Um, the one, like, retro game store, unfortunately we only have one here, but the one um, retro game store that we have here in town, they moved location. Now, they're still in the same building. They're just in a much bigger space, which is cool. And, yeah, I was... Uh, really impressed by the, how much they have now they have a ton of stuff and i did get a bunch of games here which is cool that kind of go across different systems first up i uh, got one sega saturn game again sega saturn is one of those systems where the games are really expensive because sega saturn wasn't around long it was only around i think about three or four years and the library wasn't that big so a lot of the games are pretty expensive to get hold of uh this one was pretty cheap because this was actually a pack-in title when it originally came out and it is of virtual cop i have not played virtual cop in so long this was also in the arcade um i everywhere i go if i see the arcade version i play it because this is just a really fun game um, unfortunately, I do not have the Sega Stunner. I need to get one for the for the Saturn, but you can also play it with the regular controller, which is cool. But this was ten bucks, and I figured, why not? The disc is flawless. But again, this is the uh, the pack in version, which is why it has the not for resale thing on there. And then I actually got a couple Dreamcast games. Uh, first up, we've got Max Steel Covert Missions. Um, Max Steel was a CGI TV series in the early 2000s. I used to watch it, and he did get his own video game, which was exclusive to the Dreamcast. So I saw that. I was like, pretty cool. You know, I remember this series, and I figured, uh, why not? You know, why not uh, pick this up for the collection and play it? And then I had this on PlayStation 2, but I, I wanted to grab it. Um, unfortunately. It does not have all the, well, it has the artwork. It's just the booklet is only the cover. So I'll have to maybe possibly try and track down the booklet online. We'll see. But I did get Silent Scope. Again, I have this on PlayStation 2. But I figured, you know, why not pick it up for the Dreamcast as well. Very fun arcade game. I suck at this game, but it's still very fun to play. One of these days I'll get better at it. But good stuff nonetheless. Silent Scope is a lot of fun. Um, I don't, they, I know they did a bunch of sequels. Silent Scope 2 is the one I remember the most. I need to get that for the PS2. And the last Dreamcast game that I got, this one I've actually been wanting to get. Because again, this, well not that I didn't want the others, but this one I've really been wanting to get. Um, again, this was an arcade game that was ported over to uh, Dreamcast. This was a Sega exclusive in terms of arcade and then the system, but it is WWF. Royal Rumble. Yes, I know there's a million WWF Royal Rumble games. This is the Dreamcast one. Again, this was an arcade game, and then it was sent over to the Dreamcast. But I saw this, got pretty excited about it. I figured, hey, why not? Pretty fun stuff here. Can't complain. And then the other four are all PlayStation 1 games. Um, You know, I saw this one. I've seen a playthrough of it here on YouTube. It doesn't look fantastic, but it looks kind of fun. Um, but it is Blade, uh, based on, of course, the movie with Wesley Snipes. Um, never played it. And Blade 2 actually got a video game as well for PS2. I'm trying to track that one down. That one is about a $20 game. I was a little surprised. But uh, 
yeah, looking forward to this. Again, it, it's probably not the greatest game ever, but if I can get some enjoyment out of it, why the hell not? You know, good stuff either way. Then, finally got The Game of Life. I used to play this a lot. I had a copy on PC, but it broke. The disc cracked. Um, but I've also played uh, this version quite a bit. I used to rent this from the video store a lot. But very fun. Um, Hasbro ported over a lot of these from the PC. I have Monopoly for PlayStation. I think they did Clue. They did a bunch of others. But uh, this is fun. This is a really fun game. And this is actually a replacement copy. I had this game, but um, it no longer works. It's not scratched or anything. It just doesn't play anymore. Um, but this is the original version. I had, like, the greatest hits version. And it is Jet Moto. And I believe this was actually the first video game I ever got for the PlayStation 1, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I got my PS1 many, many moons ago from, I don't have it anymore, I got rid of it. I do want to get an original PlayStation just to have one, because sometimes, some of the, even though PS2 is backwards compatible, there are some games that do not play on the PS2, or like Mortal Kombat Trilogy, there's a lot of glitches when you play it on a PS2, but anyway, um, but this was actually the first game that I ever had for PlayStation. Um... My neighbor got one for me. It only came with the demo disc. And I remember going to Kmart, of all places, with my mom. And this was the first game I ever had for PlayStation. It's a really fun game. It's like a, you know, a flying motorcycle racing game. But they're fun. They did a bunch of sequels. I think I have Jet Moto 3 somewhere that somebody gave to me. But, uh, yeah, this is a really fun game. Cool stuff. And the soundtrack is really good as well. And last but certainly not least, when it comes to the video games, um, I have not played this game in many, many years. I was really excited when they had a copy of it, and I figured, why not pick it up? Uh, again, I have not played this game in so long, and it is Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. Yes, this is really fun. This is basically just a bunch of mini games where you can play as not only Solid Snake, but you can play as the Ninja as well. And yeah, there's uh, just different training missions. There's like a murder mystery mode. Uh, this is really cool. This is a really cool, really fun game. Um, the only reason why I didn't have it until now is because many years ago, Walmart, when they were doing like the multi-game packs and stuff like that, I bought the Metal Gear Solid trilogy, which had the first game and Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance and Metal Gear Solid 3. And, of course, this was the odd duck that was not included, but finally got a hold of it. Uh, again, this is a really awesome game. If you guys have ever played this, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't played it and you got PlayStation or, or PlayStation 2, pick this up. This is really fun. And next up, got some movies here. First up, one VHS. This is a martial arts training tape. This is the new world of martial arts with Guru, Dan, and Asanto. Uh, this popped up on eBay really cheap, even the, and the seller even offered more of a discount on it, so I got it for basically nothing. And I don't know what's on this tape, I don't know what this tape was done for, but, you know, pretty rare, so I figured why not grab it for the collection. And then I got some laser discs. I've um, been wanting to get these for quite a while, so I figured why not, got these all pretty cheap on eBay. First up, we've got the widescreen edition of Beverly Hills Cop. Don't really need to introduce this movie. Then I got the widescreen edition of Beverly Hills Cop 2. Now, I ordered Beverly Hills Cop 3. It showed up yesterday in the mail, and the disc was cracked. So, pretty upset about that. Beverly Hills Cop 3 is nowhere near a great movie, but I like it for what it is. I don't mind having it on Laserdisc. I have it on VHS. I have it on Blu-ray. Again, I don't mind having it on Laserdisc. Um, but unfortunately, again, um, it showed up cracked. So I'm in the process of ordering another copy off of Laserdisc database. I'm just waiting for the seller to get back to me. But until then, I have one and two. And then I got the other... Beverly Hills Cop 3, a.k.a. Metro with Eddie Murphy. This isn't widescreen. There was only ever a widescreen release for this. 
absolutely love this movie. This is one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies. I would say his most underrated movie. And yeah, I definitely do not mind having this one on Laserdisc. I'm sure it'll look and sound great. And I'm really looking forward to cranking this one up. I think it has, does it have an AC3 soundtrack or no? Actually, I don't think it does. It just says stereo, digital sound. Dolby Dig yeah, I don't think this has the uh, the AC3 soundtrack on here. But regardless, um, you know, it's going to sound great and look great as the Canon Laserdisc. Can't complain. Good stuff. And then um, got a couple Blu-rays and one DVD here. Uh, first up, this is a UK release. This is a little bit harder to come by now. Um, but I finally got a hold of this in the collection, and it is the first season of Biker Mice from Mars. Yes, this is the original Biker Mice from Mars. There was another series that came out. It was like a remake, basically, uh, many, many years later, but this is the original season, uh, original season one, or season one of the original series. I wish I could talk. That would be great. But really enjoyed this. I do remember watching this as a kid. I think I have some VHS left over. Um, but now I have the complete first season on DVD. This is put out by Maximum Entertainment in the UK. They put out a lot of vintage old school cartoons and stuff on DVD. They are all out of print now because the company went out of business. And a lot of them are hard to find, including this one. But very happy to get this. Unfortunately, season two and three never got an official DVD release, but they are really easy to find online. I think maybe even here on YouTube you can find them. Um, and there is a American release of season one, but I don't know how legit it is. It looks like a fancy schmancy bootleg. Um, if I ever find one for a decent price, I'll grab it. But until then, this is the best way to see season one. So cannot complain. Uh, very happy to get this. I have not seen this show in so long. Looking forward to watching it. And then, got a couple Blu-rays. First up, uh, my collection is finally complete. This movie I had on DVD. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if it got stolen or misplaced or whatever. But the Blu-ray finally came out last month. It was delayed for a little bit. I think they were having some issues. But it's finally out now, and it is... Eye of the Tiger with Gary Busey. Very, very fun 80s action film. Uh, this has a 2K high-definition remaster. Looking forward to checking this movie out. This is basically Death Wish 3 with Gary Busey. He rides around in this badass truck. He, uh, William Smith is the bad guy. He fights these bikers. Um, very, very fun 80s action film. If you have not seen this, I recommend it. And now it's on Blu-ray, so it's going to look as good as it can. But this movie's top-notch, in my opinion. And yes, it has the Eye of the Tiger song in the film. Um, so there you go. But it's really fun. Again, just picture Death Wish 3. Instead of Charles Bronson, it's Gary Busey. But good stuff. And then both of these were thrift store finds. Um, got these at one of the local thrift stores. Um, Wednesday is like their half off day. So these were like two bucks a piece. So I really cannot complain. But first up got Entrapment with Sean Connery and Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh, I believe Sean Connery said out of the movies in the nineties, I think he said this was his favorite one. I disagree. My favorite nineties Sean Connery film is none other than The Rock, but that's just me. Um, but I have not seen this movie in so long. I'm looking forward to checking it out again. Now, the unfortunate thing is not all the features from the DVD are on here. The commentary is on here, but it doesn't have all the other extra features which came on the DVD version. So if I ever find it really cheap, I'll pick it up. Until then, I'll stick with this. And then my brother gave me shit about this one, but it is a good movie. I don't care what people say. And it is... Mean Girls, and this is a blockbuster rental, which is another reason why I picked it up. But Mean Girls is a good comedy. Um, I don't care what people say. It's a fun movie. Um, it's got a lot of good stuff in it, so can't complain. But my brother gave me shit because that's my brother. That's what he does. But good stuff nonetheless. But anyway, um, I know this was a pretty big update. I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this collection update. Again, mostly records, but 
you know, working on upgrading this stuff now that things are back to normal for the most part, you know, financially, I was, you know, kind of struggling a little bit there. But um, now that things are, again, good financially, I can start the uh, long, it's going to be a long process because a lot of them are out of print and expensive. But working on grabbing, you know, upgrading this stuff to Blu-ray for the most part. So that's what you're going to be seeing in the future collection updates. I'm, of course, going to still grab records and games and what have you. So not just movies, but that's what I'm going to be focusing on kind of from here on out. You know, I know I said earlier this year, yeah, by June, I want to upgrade everything to Blue. That didn't happen, obviously. Life got in the way. Um, but from here on out, I want to try to, again, upgrade as much as I can, you know, reasonably um, to Blu-ray. So that's, you know, what you guys are going to be seeing in the, in the near future here is a lot of Blu-rays coming in. Um, and, of course, stuff that's coming out as well. But anyway, um, take care, guys. Uh, I will upload this video on Monday. So you will be seeing this on Monday, but I'm filming it on Friday. So, yeah. So enjoy your week. And uh, we will talk soon. See you.